Lagos Coast with life, a vibrant city full of dreams and struggles. Amidst the throngs of people, Auntie Nkechi was a pillar of strength. Her smile, as warm as the afternoon sun, could brighten even the toughest day. Life had thrown her curveballs, but Nkechi always persevered. She raised five children alone. Her husband, taken too soon, was a constant ache in her heart. But Nkechi, she was a fighter. Her small provision store was her lifeline, a testament to her resilience. Each day, Nkechi poured her heart and soul into her work. The community knew her, they respected her. Nkechi was a beacon of hope, proof that even in the face of hardship, one could rise above. Her heart overflowed with love, especially for her children. Their education, their future, was her driving force. Every naira she earned, every sale she made, was a step closer to securing their dreams. Nkechi's life was a symphony of hard work, love, and unwavering faith. She was a testament to the indomitable spirit of a Lagos woman. The air hung heavy with humidity. The scent of spices wafted through Nkechi's open shop door. She hummed along to a familiar tune on the radio, counting the day's earnings. Life was a struggle, but Nkechi felt a sense of peace. Suddenly, the shrill ring of her mobile phone shattered the calm. An unknown number. Nkechi hesitated, then answered. A smooth, confident voice boomed through the receiver. Am I speaking with Mrs. Nkechi? The man introduced himself as Mr. Charles, a representative from a prestigious investment firm. He spoke of incredible opportunities, of doubling, no, tripling her savings in a matter of weeks. Nkechi listened, a seed of hope blooming in her chest. Could this be the answer to her prayers? Could this be the break she needed to secure her children's future? Mr. Charles was persuasive, his words painting a picture of a brighter tomorrow. He spoke of exclusive investment plans tailored for hardworking women like herself. Doubts gnawed at her. It seemed too good to be true, but Mr. Charles was relentless. He spoke of her children, of the future they deserved, he appealed to her dreams, to her unwavering love for her family. Nkechi, torn between skepticism and the allure of a better life, made a decision that would change everything. That night, sleep evaded Nkechi. The weight of Mr. Charles's words pressed down on her a mixture of excitement and trepidation swirling in her gut. She tossed and turned on her mattress, the humid air doing little to cool her racing thoughts. Images of her children, their faces lit with gratitude and hope, flashed before her eyes. Could this be the answer to their prayers? The thought of providing them with a brighter future, one free from the constant worry that had become their reality was a powerful motivator. Nkechi had always believed in hard work, in earning every Naira through honest sweat and determination. But this opportunity presented to her like a gift from the heavens seemed too good to pass up. She thought of Emeka, her eldest, on the cusp of university life. His dreams of becoming a doctor, of healing the sick and making a difference in the world ignited a fire in Nkechi's heart. She had scrimped and saved, denying herself even the smallest luxuries to put money aside for his tuition. But it never seemed like enough. This investment, however, promised to multiply her savings exponentially. It promised to ease the burden that had become her constant companion. The thought of seeing Emeka walk through those university gates, head held high, free from the shackles of financial constraints, brought tears to Nkichi's eyes. It was a future worth fighting for, a risk worth taking. The following morning, Nkechi found herself drawn back to the phone. Her hand trembled slightly as she dialed the number Mr. Charles had given her, his voice echoing in her ear. 
smooth and reassuring. He answered on the second ring, his tone as charming and professional as their first encounter. And Kichi, her voice a mix of nervousness and determination, inquired about the investment plan. Mr. Charles, ever the consummate salesman, patiently explained the details, his words laced with promises of high returns and minimal risk. He spoke of her money working for her, of growing exponentially in a matter of weeks. He assured her that their firm catered to individuals like herself, hardworking people seeking to secure their financial future. He spoke of their impeccable track record, of countless satisfied clients who had reaped the rewards of their strategic investments. His words, carefully chosen and expertly delivered, chipped away at the wall of skepticism Nkichi had built around herself. Hesitantly, she voiced her concerns, the doubts that lingered in the back of her mind. Mr. Charles, unfazed, addressed each one with a calm confidence that both impressed and disarmed her. He spoke of transparency, of open communication, and invited her to visit their office, to meet the team and witness firsthand the legitimacy of their operation. Inkichi, swayed by his words and the glimmer of hope he had ignited within her, made a decision that would forever alter the course of her life. She decided to invest a significant portion of her savings, a leap of faith into the unknown, fueled by the unwavering love for her children and the dream of a brighter future. Word of Inkichi's investment spread through the marketplace like wildfire. Her fellow vendors, a mix of curiosity and concern etched on their faces, peppered her with questions. Some praised her boldness, her willingness to seize an opportunity for a better life. Others, seasoned by years of hardship and wary of promises that seemed too good to be true, voiced their doubts. Mama Ada, the owner of the stall next to Inkechi's, her face etched with years of experience and a healthy dose of skepticism pulled her aside. Nkechi, my dear, she said, her voice laced with worry. Are you sure about this investment? These things, they can be risky, especially for someone like you, a single mother with children to feed. Nkechi, her heart pounding in her chest, a mixture of defiance and uncertainty in her voice, defended her decision. She spoke of the research she had done, of the glowing testimonials she had read online, of Mr. Charles's reassurances, and the trust she had placed in him. But Mama Ada's words, spoken with the wisdom of someone who had seen both the good and the bad that life had to offer, lingered in her mind. As the days turned into weeks, a seed of doubt began to grow in the pit of Nkichi's stomach. The promised returns had yet to materialize, and Mr. Charles, once so readily available, had become increasingly difficult to reach. Her calls went unanswered, his voice replaced by the cold, impersonal tone of a voicemail message. Fear, like a venomous serpent, slithered its way into Enkichi's heart, squeezing the breath from her lungs and threatening to extinguish the flicker of hope that had sustained her. She tried to convince herself that it was just a delay, a minor hiccup in the grand scheme of things, but deep down, a chilling realization began to dawn. She had been scammed. Days morphed into weeks. The silence from Mr. Charles and his investment firm was deafening in Kichi's initial hope, that bloom of optimism that had taken root in her heart began to wither. The phone calls, once answered with such warmth and assurance, now met a cold, automated wall. Her messages, filled with a growing sense of unease, remained unanswered. The gravity of her situation pressed down on her, a suffocating weight that threatened to crush her spirit. The money she had invested, the fruit of years of back-breaking labor and sacrifices was gone, vanished into thin air, 
leaving behind a gaping hole in her life and a knot of fear twisting in her gut. The thought of her children, their futures now shrouded in uncertainty, sent a fresh wave of nausea through her. Emika, his eyes bright with the promise of a future he so richly deserved, her younger ones, their laughter echoing through their small home, how could she have been so foolish? How could she have gambled away their dreams on a whisper, a promise that now rang hollow and cruel? Despair, like a bitter potion, seeped into her bones, threatening to consume her. The shop, once her sanctuary, her haven, from the harsh realities of life in Lagos, now felt like a constant reminder of her folly. The shelves, once stacked high with provisions, were starting to thin. Her dwindling stock, a tangible manifestation of her dwindling hope. News of Nkechi's misfortune spread through the marketplace like a virus, carried on the wind of gossip and tinged with a mixture of pity and schadenfreude. The whispers started subtly, a hushed conversation here, a knowing glance there, but soon escalated into open murmurs, their words sharp as blades, piercing Nkechi's already wounded heart. Some, their faces etched with genuine concern, offered words of comfort, their voices laced with empathy for the plight of a fellow trader. They reminded her of her strength, her resilience, urging her to hold on to hope, to rise above this setback as she had done countless times before. Others, however, were less forgiving. They saw her misfortune as a source of amusement, a cautionary tale to be shared in hushed tones, their laughter echoing through the marketplace like a cruel mockery of her pain. They called her naive, foolish, her gullibility a source of entertainment in their otherwise mundane lives. The shame of it all washed over Nkichi in suffocating waves. She, who had always held her head high, who had faced life's challenges with unwavering determination, now found herself the subject of whispers and ridicule. The weight of their judgment, the sting of their laughter, was almost unbearable. Even within her own family, the whispers found their way, planting seeds of doubt and resentment. Amika, his youthful idealism, clashing with the harsh realities of their situation, couldn't understand his mother's naivety. His disappointment tinged with anger and a sense of betrayal. The rift between them, once a hairline fracture, now threatened to become a chasm widening with each passing day. Nkichi felt the weight of her neighbor's stares. Their whispers, once muffled, now seemed to echo in her ears. Shame burned in her throat, hot and bitter. But as she looked at her children, their faces etched with worry, a steely resolve solidified in her heart. She would not be broken. She would not let these scammers, these vultures who preyed on the hopes of hardworking people, steal her dignity, her children's future. Nkechi had faced hardship before, had stared adversity in the face and emerged stronger. This was no different. She would fight. She would reclaim what was stolen. This time, it wasn't just about the money. It was about justice. It was about teaching her children that even in the face of overwhelming odds, one must never surrender to despair. The fire of determination rekindled in her eyes, chasing away the shadows of doubt and fear. She would become a lioness, protecting her pride, her family. They may have taken her savings, but they had underestimated her spirit. The unwavering love of a mother backed into a corner. Hope though faint, flickered back into Nkechi's life in the form of a worn business card. Mama Ada, her brow creased with concern, had pressed it into her hand. He's the best there is, she had whispered. Mr. Bayo, a private investigator. He's helped others who've been scammed. Nkechi clutched the card, a lifeline in her storm of despair. Mr. Bayo's office was a world away from the bustling marketplace 
a small, sparsely furnished room tucked away in a quiet corner of the city. He was a man of few words, his eyes sharp and calculating, his demeanor a curious mix of world weariness and quiet determination. He listened patiently as Nkichi poured out her story, her voice trembling with a mix of anger and shame. He didn't interrupt, didn't judge. He simply listened, absorbing every detail, his gaze never leaving hers. When she was finished, he leaned back in his chair, a thoughtful expression on his face. It's a familiar story, he finally said, his voice low and gravelly. These scammers, they prey on the vulnerable, on dreams of a better life. He looked at Nkechi, his gaze steady, but don't lose hope. We'll find them. We'll get your money back. The weight of their situation pressed down on Emeka, heavier than the textbooks he now struggled to afford. His mother, his rock, the embodiment of strength and resilience seemed smaller somehow. Her shoulders stooped under the weight of worry. The news of the scam had spread through their small community, a dark cloud casting a shadow over their lives. He watched his mother transform from a beacon of hope to a shell of her former self. The laughter that once filled their home was replaced by a heavy silence, punctuated by his younger siblings' hushed whispers and his mother's stifled sobs. He felt a well of anger rising within him, directed not only at the scammers who had preyed on his mother's good nature, but also at himself. He was the eldest, the one who was supposed to protect his family to ease their burdens. Yet here he was, helpless, unable to shield them from the harsh realities of the world. When his mother revealed her plan to hire a private investigator to track down the scammers and reclaim what was stolen, Amika felt a surge of fear. This wasn't some petty theft, some neighborhood squabble. These were dangerous people, criminals who operated in the shadows, their greed fueled by desperation and a callous disregard for the lives they destroyed. He pleaded with his mother to reconsider, to let the authorities handle it, to not put herself in harm's way. Mama, please, he begged, his voice thick with emotion. These people are dangerous. We can't fight them. We have to let it go. And Kichi studied her reflection. Gone was the familiar image of the hardworking market woman. In her place stood a stranger, a woman of means and influence, a tailored dress, emerald green and shimmering under the dim light hugged her curves. Gold bangles, borrowed from Mama Ada, adorned her wrists, their weight both foreign and exhilarating. Her hair, usually hidden under a colorful head wrap, was now styled in an intricate updo, framing her face and accentuating the determination etched in her eyes. A touch of lipstick, a shade bolder than she'd ever dared, completed the transformation. And Kichi barely recognized herself. The reflection staring back at her was a warrior, a woman on a mission. The fear that had gnawed at her, the shame that had threatened to consume her, were pushed aside, replaced by a steely resolve. She had donned this armor, not just to reclaim what was stolen, but to prove to herself, to her children, that she was not broken. This was her battleground, and she would emerge victorious. The name rolled off her tongue, unfamiliar yet exhilarating. Madam Grace, a woman of wealth and influence, a shark swimming in the murky waters of high stakes investments. In Kichi, drawing on a wellspring of strength she never knew she possessed, embraced the role with a confidence that belied her nervousness. Mr. Bayo had secured a meeting, a chance for Madam Grace to assess the investment opportunities offered by Mr. Charles and his associates. As she settled into the back of the rented car, a sleek black sedan that whispered of wealth and power. 
and Kichi took a deep breath, steeling herself for the encounter. The car sliced through the chaotic Lagos traffic, a stark contrast to the crowded streets she was accustomed to. Each passing block took her further away from the familiar comfort of her world and deeper into the lion's den. Doubt, a persistent shadow, whispered in her ear, reminding her of the risks, the possibility of failure. But Inkechi silenced it with a steely glare. Failure was not an option. She had come too far, sacrificed too much to turn back now. She was Madam Grace, a force to be reckoned with, and she would not be deterred. The restaurant, a haven of opulence and hushed conversations, shimmered under the glow of chandeliers. In Kichi, her heart pounding, a steady rhythm against her ribs, navigated the unfamiliar terrain with practiced grace. Years of haggling in the marketplace had honed her instincts, taught her to read people, to sense their weaknesses. Mr. Charles, his smile as polished as his expensive suit, rose to greet her, his eyes widening slightly as he took in her transformation. Gone was the timid woman he had spoken to on the phone. In her place stood Madam Grace, an aura of wealth and authority radiating from her. His associates, a motley crew of sharply dressed men and women, mirrored his surprise. In Keichi, savoring their moment of disorientation, extended a hand, her touch firm, her voice a practiced blend of confidence and disinterest. Mr. Charles, I presume, she said, her gaze sweeping over the group, assessing their reactions, committing their faces to memory. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. The game was on. The meeting felt like a carefully choreographed dance. And Kitchi, her nerves masked by Madame Grace's confident facade, parried questions about her investment portfolio, inventing stories of lucrative ventures and overseas holdings. Mr. Charles and his cohorts, their eyes gleaming with avarice, lapped it up, eager to reel in their big fish. However, one pair of eyes held a flicker of suspicion. Clara, Mr. Charles's second in command, sharp as attack and twice as ruthless, she possessed an uncanny ability to sniff out deceit. Her gaze, unwavering and sharp as a honed blade, lingered on Inkichi, dissecting her every word, every gesture. Madam Grace, Clara interjected, her voice smooth as silk, yet laced with steel. Your investment portfolio is impressive, but forgive my curiosity. We haven't had the pleasure of encountering your esteemed name in our circles before. Inkichi's heart skipped a beat. She had anticipated this line of questioning, had crafted a backstory a tale of inherited wealth and a reclusive lifestyle. But under Clara's piercing gaze, the carefully constructed facade threatened to crumble. My dear, Nkichi said, summoning Madame Grace's haughty demeanor, I prefer to keep a low profile. Discretion, you see, is paramount in my line of business. She leaned back, her voice laced with a practiced boredom. Besides, true wealth whispers it doesn't brag. Clara, unconvinced, pressed on, her questions becoming more pointed, probing for inconsistencies in Nkichi's carefully crafted narrative. Nkichi, her mind racing, parried each thrust with a mix of half-truths and carefully constructed lies. Her performance, a delicate balancing act on a razor's edge. Time? Once in Keichi's enemy, now became her ally. Days turned into weeks, each encounter with the scammers a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Mr. Bayo, working tirelessly behind the scenes, had uncovered a trail of deceit, a web of shell companies and fraudulent transactions that pointed to a larger operation than they had initially suspected. In Keichi, emboldened by each successful deception, played her role to perfection, dangling the promise of a massive investment, a tantalizing carrot that kept the scammers hooked. 
She had become a master manipulator, her fear replaced by a steely determination to bring these criminals to justice. The final act, a carefully orchestrated sting operation, unfolded with the precision of a well-rehearsed play. Madam Grace, her voice trembling slightly, but her resolve unwavering, agreed to meet Mr. Charles and his associates at a secluded warehouse, the alleged location of their most lucrative operation. Hidden cameras, strategically placed by Mr. Bayo and his team, captured every incriminating word, every boastful confession that spilled from the scammer's lips. They bragged about their exploits, their faces illuminated by the glow of ill-gotten gains, unaware that their every move was being monitored, their words recorded for posterity. As Mr. Charles, his eyes gleaming with greed, reached for a briefcase containing what he believed to be a down payment. A sea of blue uniforms flooded the warehouse. The air crackled with the sound of police sirens, the sharp bark of orders, and the panicked shouts of the cornered scammers. The game was over. News of the arrests spread like wildfire through the streets of Lagos. The story of Auntie Nkichi, the market woman who had outwitted a gang of sophisticated scammers, became a tale whispered in awe. No longer was she the victim, the object of pity or scorn. Nkechi was a heroine, her name synonymous with courage and cunning. The authorities, initially skeptical of her claims, were forced to acknowledge her bravery. The evidence she and Mr. Bayo had gathered was irrefutable, leading to the swift conviction of Mr. Charles and his cohorts. The recovered funds, a testament to Nkechi's audacious plan, were returned to the grateful victims, their faith in humanity restored. But for Nkechi, the greatest reward wasn't the money. It was the look on Emeka's face, a mixture of pride and relief, the hug that spoke volumes of his admiration. The rift between them, healed by his mother's bravery, was replaced by a bond stronger than ever. Life had taken an unexpected turn. With the money from the recovered lottery ticket, Nkechi's humble provision store underwent a transformation. Walls were expanded, shelves overflowed with goods, and the once cramped space became a bustling supermarket, a testament to her resilience and business acumen. Customers, drawn by her story and the quality of her goods, flocked to her shop. Nkechi, her heart brimming with gratitude, treated each one like family, her infectious laughter echoing through the aisles. She had become a local legend, a beacon of hope, her story a reminder that even in the face of adversity, courage and determination can prevail. She became known as Millionaire Mama, a title bestowed upon her with a mix of respect and affection. But despite her newfound wealth, Nkichi remained unchanged. She still woke up before dawn, the aroma of her pepper soup filling the house, her heart overflowing with love for her children, the driving force behind her every endeavor. Nkichi had stared down her fears and emerged victorious. She had not only reclaimed what was stolen, but had also gained something far more valuable, the unwavering belief in herself, the knowledge that within her resided a strength she never knew she possessed. And in the bustling heart of Lagos, her story became a beacon of hope, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a woman who dared to fight back.